Well, I've known these guys for a substantial part of my life when we were young together. I was in my 20s when I first met Rob and, and Glenn and in my early 30s when I met Joe. Um, they are so devoted to a holistic notion of adolescence. They're so devoted to the idea that kids should have a lot of different experiences while they're growing up and they've tried to provide those. All the lessons that you learn on the field, you can apply to the classroom. And lessons that you learn in the classroom, you can also apply on the field. And then, you know, in the bigger picture, the two of them working together uh, teach you maybe how to handle with things that you're going to face in life. I was able to coach a lot of the kids that he taught. Listening to them say, not only did your dad teach me about science, but he taught me about how to be a better person. Yeah, I mean, that's what you do it for. I mean, be fair, be nice to people. You just hope that, that that's really what rubs off more than the, the biology. Biology is not number one. Number, number one is just everything else that you can get. And hopefully I you know, taught that by example. Oh, you did. You did. There was uh, no question. You know, we just felt like we were in a place where we're all, you know, growing together. We could laugh together. We can learn. I don't know many scenarios where I've encountered that ever again. I think you probably understand the impact you've had on your kids. I really do. I don't think you would have stayed around if you didn't. If I didn't think it was there, yeah. That's one of the best things about teaching is, is that it, it, it's the one thing that defies physics in the sense that it, it actually gives energy and you know creates a chain reaction. You know, there, there's really no sort of greater role than anyone can play in somebody else's life. So it, it was a magical place uh, for a lot of reasons, not the least of which I think and the most important reason was the teachers. I mean they've all been great science teachers but they've probably been equally or maybe even more influ uh, influential outside the classroom. They are the Renaissance men of this campus. They have done everything. Rob hooked us both into junior stuff, like JPD. My, we weren't involved you know, I, I could tell who the suckers were. Yeah, he, uh, he pegged us. All of the extracurricular stuff was just a lot of fun. I got a lot of satisfaction from it. Um, and that's probably where I worked up a certain camaraderie that, uh, that I was able to last here and not get weeded out with the other teachers. Those were the kids that I worked the closest with and uh, that I still remember and think about, you know, to this day. It was very rewarding in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Flintwood Prep allowed me to um, connect with the kids in a different way other than teaching. I think to be a successful teacher, you have to know more than the, this, this student as um, how they perform academically. And that makes them a better student, it makes you a better teacher. Getting to know the kids in a different light is very important. I never considered it uh, coming to work. It was like coming to Flint Ridge. It wasn't a job, it was like my part of my family. It's what I did every day when I got up. I have so many friends here. I witnessed the birth of their children. I, I witnessed their, some of them, their weddings. I'm teaching kids of people I used to teach. It's not just the kids, it's the whole community. It's the, the faculty and the staff and the parents and just everybody has made me feel so comfortable here. It's a family, it really is. Uh, everyone here cares for you. And it's not like I have to go to work. It's I, I get to see some more, some more of my friends, and, and I I include the the students in that. These guys have been instrumental in the growth of the school. The core of teachers that actually have been retiring over the last couple of years and will be retiring really helped bring that school from where it was to where it is. Those of us like me that have been lucky enough to watch the transformation from start to finish, uh, I think we understand the importance that you guys made. You are a legend at this school and you've made your mark. Second time I heard that word today. I heard that from a ninth grader who hadn't even teaching. Oh, where would that come from? Because you're so old. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You've got an incredible, an incredible legacy. 42 years, two generations. It was just amazing. Just absolutely amazing. It, it's how can you put like a career like yours, you know, which has been as amazing as it has been, you know, into into a few words. It's it's impossible. I just feel fulfilled. That's all I. That's all I could ask for. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna have a lot of good memories. What what makes a teacher? 
continue when he's had bad days is you will reflect on your successes. And you know, somebody like him just makes me say, you know what, teaching was, was my calling. I settled in the right career. That's what I learned from them. It, I, I think I've learned that this was sort of what I w always wanted to do. So I've had the perfect, uh, perfect job. And I think you already know that uh, me watching you grow up made me want to be a teacher. <laughs> I'm uh, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> some people would understand why, some people wouldn't. Um, and I've uh, never regretted one second of it. In any great school with any long-term faculty, they never quite leave. They're a piece of the school's soul. Uh, they're the piece of the school's essence. And they become a permanent part of the culture, a permanent part of the fabric. That's kind of, that's kind of why I, I do what I do.